Are you going to be rooting for Team USA? Uh, I don't root for countries. I root for athletes. Will you be rooting for Team USA? I'm going to be rooting for athletes individually. I'm not going to be rooting for any uh, team just because it's some country that I live in. Because the truth is, I shouldn't. patriotism shouldn't be that strong. I'm in this country because I was born in it. And because it gives me some opportunities, it doesn't mean that there aren't things to fix. So I'm not going to root on someone just because they come from the same place as me. I'm not proud to live in a country where I can't even go down my own neighborhood and see people putting up their Blue Lives Matter flags telling me that my life doesn't matter. I just, I root for particular athletes rather than the country as a whole. If you were to ask me in the last administration, maybe not. So now that Biden's in office, you'll root for Team USA. Well, I guess when you say it like that, Oh, man, that last question was just so savage. Joining me now, Ophelia Jacobson. She is a campus reform reporter and also student at the University of Florida. You should be sainted for having to go talk to these idiots. Please tell me it wasn't as bad as that video made it look. Unfortunately, that is the reality of our college campuses. I've talked to hundreds of students with the Leadership Institute's campus reform, and the responses I get just keep on repeating themselves time and time again. And this isn't the first time that I've done a video showcasing just how unpatriotic our American college students are these days. I did a video for the 4th of July asking students if they were proud to be an American. And these college students told me no, flat out that they would move to another country, that they were willing to give up their U.S. citizenship just because of how much they hate the United States of America. And it's sad. You know, my generation, we are the next generation of leaders, and we're supposed to be leading this country to greatness. But it begs the question, you know, how are we supposed to be doing that if we're not even patriotic or we don't even believe our country is capable of greatness in the first place? Okay, I'm not at the University of Florida, nor would I ever attend an SEC school, but that's another matter. But I'm not at the University of Florida. You are. How bad is it? What, where are they getting this? Is this the professors or their student groups? Are you, are you, if, if you're that big of a moron, you learned it from someone. Who they learn it from? They're learning it from their professors. We've done multiple articles highlighting just how radical these college course offerings are. You know, we've done stories on, for example, Bard College. They're offering an abolish the police course. So it's no surprise oh, that 49% of millennials now want to defund the police. And college students my age are thinking the same exact thing. And what's interesting is that in these classrooms, they're never going to learn what it's like to not have a police force in the community. They're not going to learn about the increase in crime that's going to be in the community when there's no police officers to help when there's a dangerous threat. And that's another problem that we've been covering is that these students aren't being taught how to critically think for themselves. They're only getting one viewpoint in the classroom. And most of the time, it's that radical viewpoint. Again, defunding the police, abolishing prisons. And even furthermore, you know, we've oh, seen geez. other trends. Go ahead. No, go ahead. We've seen other trends of, you know, support for socialism gaining traction on college campuses, too. And it's the professors who are preaching that socialism is good and capitalism is bad. I want to talk about the racism part of this in particular. Now, uh, college campuses are little heavenly bubbles is what they are, full of beautiful lawns and beautiful buildings and beautiful people and delicious food, as we pointed out. Do these kids genuinely believe this country sucks or is this all performative? Do you think they really believe it? They really do. And I can tell you as a college student myself, when I do these videos, I ask these questions, you know, hoping, you know, expecting the worst because I've done these videos time and time again and I've gotten these responses. And while it is shocking to the average American, we at the Leadership Institute's campus reform, we're not surprised because we get these responses time and time again. It would be some, it would be another story if it was just one or two college students, every other video that we did. But when it's every single college student, almost every single college student that we talk to, you know, you start to question yourself, this is how college students are thinking these days. And when you ask these students why they think the way they do, why they believe a certain thing, the thing is they don't know how to back up their claims. They're just going along with what they see on social media, what their professors are telling them. And so it's really concerning because again, these students aren't learning how to critically think for themselves. They're just spewing out these talking points that either they saw in a meme on Instagram or they were scrolling on Twitter and saw a one-liner from Chrissy Teigen or something like that. You know, they're just spewing out these talking points that really don't make any sense, but they have no evidence to back it up. All right, back in April, 
you got censored. Campus reform got censored because, uh, look, everyone remembers Black Lives Matter. You couldn't walk five steps without getting blasted in the face about something from Black Lives Matter. Their founder, Patrice, what's it, Patrice Cullors, Patrice you guys Patrice. did something on her and it got censored. Why would they censor it? Were you vulgar or something? We were not. We simply went to the University of Florida, my campus. I went and I talked to students. I showed them pictures of her beautiful mansions that she spent millions of dollars on. And I asked students, who do you think owns these houses? They were telling me big name politicians, Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, you know, maybe Hillary Clinton owned one of them. But when I told them it was the Black Lives Matter co-founder, they were shocked because for months they have been taught to support the Black Lives Matter organization, which is a Marxist organization, might I point out. And she has a lot of, um, you know, influence on college campuses as well. But that's a whole nother story. We did this video hoping to expose the hypocrisy of the Black Lives Matter organization. And we simply just told the truth. We asked students fair questions. We got their candid reactions and we were censored on YouTube. There is a flag on our video for a while where you, ha you had to accept the flag in order to watch the video. And people were commenting saying, hey, why is this being censored? And after 24 hours, they luckily took that flag down. But it just goes to show the big tech censorship of you know when people actually try to expose the truth and to get college students to critically think for themselves, the left doesn't want that. And so they immediately shut it down. All right, <laughs> you put up a tweet about Kamala Harris, and I, I want you to tell me right now this was some kind of parody. You talked to how many students who didn't know who she was? We talked to four students. We were trying to film a video that is coming out very soon on our YouTube channel, so stay tuned. And we were saying, hey, we're doing a video about Kamala Harris. Would you like to talk about her? Who's that? That was the response that we got from <laughs> four students. Four students did not know who the vice president of this country was. It's, it's embarrassing. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.